Okay, so it's a pleasure to be here. Well, I've been in, uh, at Bun for on many occasions, but usually at a smaller, more uh, setting at Burrs. So today I'm talking about uh, uh, joint work with Guillermo Brown. Uh, and, uh, well, so maybe I will show the entire first page. So, so what it is about, it's about a certain lower bound for complexity of entanglement det detection, uh, which is just, well, one, another, one more application of the Dvoretsky theorem to, uh, from asymptotic geometric analysis uh, so, uh, to quantum information theory. So, just to recall to people who are not familiar with with uh, geometry, so the Dvoretsky theorem tells in a very precise way, and this is going to be made more precise, that whenever you have a high-dimensional convex body, then it has uh, sections. In fact, most sections of fairly large dimension, which look like uh, balls, Euclidean balls, necessarily. Okay. And uh, actually, this work was, an, in a way, a uh, byproduct of, of a book that we are writing uh, together about the, exactly the interface of asymptotic geometric analysis and, uh, uh, and quantum information theory. Uh, so, uh, sorry, I want to set the. Okay, so uh, first I will start with notation, which just to so that everybody knows what the letters mean. Uh, then uh, will be background, main result, and then I will describe a little bit of the strategy behind the proof. Uh, and uh, so. In particular, the, the most important thing maybe is the tangible version of Dvoretsky's theorem, which is due to Milman. And that tells you not only that there is a spherical section of your convex body, but gives you actually much more information about how that section looks like. Uh, then, uh, then there are some more like, technical things that, that will, will appear. Later, oh, sorry. Okay, this is. I would better not try not to <laughs> turn off the technology. Okay, so just for the notation, so the set of quantum spaces on a Hilbert space will be denoted by D, and that's convex hull of rank one projections. Then, um, uh, for uh, the whenever you have a bipartite state, and we'll restrict ourselves to the bipartite case, and then separable state will be denoted by SEP. And of course, the difference, the set theoretical difference is entangled state. And of course, distinguishing between, well, figuring out whether a given state is uh, entangled and separable, it's a fundamental question. And uh, uh, well, has long history. So, which I'm going to say a little bit about that history. Uh, so, uh, first, uh, like why is uh, functional analysis or, high or, or geometry relevant? Is because uh, uh, separable state is a closed convex set. So, non-membership in that set is, will be certified by a, by a functional, by a linear form. So, this is like a relatively naive way. So in other words, this set of separable states is um, intersection of half spaces, all supporting hyperplanes, defined by all supporting hyperplanes. And this somehow leads to a scheme to approximating uh, the set set by polytopes, which also has algorithmic meaning. And that's somehow that's what underlies the, 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 the argument, this approximating scheme. So actually, so, so a naive, but it's still a uh, meaningful question of measuring this complexity of entanglement would be uh, determining how well you can approximate 
the set of separable states with a polytop of less than a certain number of faces. Now, they, they will see later that if we're instead of faces, we're asking for vertices, that would be relatively simple. But it's exactly this difference between, between the, the vertices <coughs> and, uh, and faces which makes things uh, difficult and interesting. OK, so, it's, uh, so, so historically, it is known for a dozen years or more now that deciding whether a state is entangled and separable is, an, is in general MP hard. <clears throat> so uh, however, uh, this wasn't maybe totally satisfactory because uh, all the arguments that were, at least for lower bounds to date, were based on boundary effects. So you, were, you had to look just very, very close to the boundary of the, the of the separable state and things well you would you would wouldn't be able to tell uh, things whether they are separable or or uh, or entangled if they were very close to the boundary so now our approach avoids that problem so so the uh, but uh, okay so but back to the background so so of course the as i said the the Testifying with uh, linear forms, it was a, was a rather na naive approach. Uh, less, more structured scheme is using entanglement witnesses, which are positive maps. And so, what you uh, you have a bipartite system, then you have a positive map, positively preserving maps, meaning a linear opera super operator which sends. Uh, uh, positive matrices to positive matrices, or positive semi-definite to positive semi-definite. Uh, and uh, the test is that uh, even if you extend this operator by identity on, a, on, a, uh, on the entire, on the second factor, uh, then the image of, uh, uh, okay, the image of uh, rho under that extension will be not positive if that set state is entangled. And if that state is separable, then it will be always positive. So then such a such phi is called often entanglement witness. And this is the language I will be used. So positive is just the definition which I recited. Here is somehow it's more natural sometimes to think of the positive semi-definite cone to be contained in the rear linear space of self-adjoint matrices. And this is just for, <coughs> for uh, a completely positive uh, definition, which, is, which may appear marginally at one point. OK, so another uh, element of the background is uh, uh, Sturmer's theorem, which says that uh, in the, which describes precisely positive maps on two by two matrices, and every such map can be written as a uh, sum of a uh, completely positive map and a completely positive map uh, composed with transposition. <coughs> and by dualizing this, we, we, we get that uh, transposition is an universal witness for entanglement on, on for two uh, by two states or also for two by three. That's Voronovich theorem. Uh, now, however, this doesn't work in, in a strong way in higher dimension. And so uh, this is an unpublished result, but there exists a rather detailed uh, presentation in the form of slides of, of, of that uh, talk on the web. And actually, if you want to precisely certify uh, entanglement, uh, in dimension greater than two, then the family of uh, witnesses has to be infinite, even in fact, even uncountable. But again, here we are talking about precisely certifying not even up to very small uh, level of error. Now, by uh, contrast, our, our approach is, uh, uh, is concentrated, it sort of works with states that are robustly entangled. And we say that the state is robustly entangled if, even if you mix it with equal weights with the maximally entangled state, which will be noted by rho star, then it remains entangled. 
Okay, so what we want, we want to just be able to detect entanglement of such states, which are very strongly entangled, right? So we are not talking about the boundary effects, we are talking about being able to tell things which are quite far from the boundary. And the main result is as follows. So whenever we have uh, a family of witnesses, which of capital N, and which using the Horodetsky criterion allow us to detect entanglement of every robustly entangled state, <coughs> right? Then the cardinality of that family must be exponential approximately at least in um, the third power of the dimension of the, of the space. Okay, so that's, uh, that's the main result. And well, this is what I already said. Uh, this, this is a way of describing complexity of that state and not because of some fine features on the, on the boundary. So again, this doesn't, of course, preclude existence of some other more efficient schemes. Does, does this particular scheme. In particular, it is conceivable that there exists a decision tree based on the results of, 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 uh, of those witnesses, which, which somehow works well within the limits, of course. And, and here, this doesn't contradict anything, because again, we are talking about the robustly entangled states, not the boundary effect. So it's conceivable still that, that, that this is relatively, uh, this problem can be, <coughs> can be polynomial, in, in fact, at least based, based on what we know. OK, so what are the technical tools? So, uh, so, what, uh, so the measure of complexity of a, of a convex set will be how well can we, can we approximate that convex set with a polytop which uh, has either not too many vertices or not too many facets. So we call it dimension, vertical and facial dimension not vertical, vertical, and facial dimension. But we could just as well call it verti uh, vertical or facial complexity. So those are a fine invariance in the sense that uh, if you replace k with, an infine, uh, with a linear, with an image of k under a linear map, this is an identical uh, property. You get exactly the same number, right? So now here, so, so here it's a, uh, why, well, again, again we have this roughness feature that we only want to approximate within the constant factor. And again, the role of four is not that important just, just for demonstrative purposes. So our polytop has to uh, sit between, uh, between, is supposed to contain the convex body and be contained in four times the convex body. Now four times, uh, so here where we have the, uh, it's, it's uh, homotety with respect to the zero. In the case of the states, we'll consider homotetis with respect to the maximally mixed state, uh, which is clearly the correct choice of, uh, of doing things. Okay, so those are, those are uh, dual concepts in the sense that uh, uh, if you Instead of considering the convex body, you consider it's polar, which is sort of like the, well, I'm not going to uh, go over that. Then, then it's exactly uh, faces and uh, vertices get swapped in the, in the dimension. Uh, it's uh, not very difficult, but not entirely trivial that uh, for a k-dimensional set, uh, those dimensions are of order at most n. And this, is, this has been very well known for a very long time for centrally symmetric convex sets. But uh, if you want to prove it for, for uh, sets that aren't necessarily symmetric, it, it takes to, you, you have to know a little bit more that is not entirely trivial. But still it's true. Okay. Uh, so in the case of the uh, Euclidean ball, this is sharp. And actually, both of those are of order of order n, and it's not very difficult to show. Uh, so another parameter which uh, uh, which we sort of 
use, uh, it's an obvious parameter, well, very simple parameter, but we give it a name so that we can write formula. So it's a sphericity of a set. So this is just the ratio between the out radius and the in radius of that, so how close it is to the ball, right? As I said previously, uh, this is a, a, an affine invariant. So actually, we could have used here any ellipsoid, but for the, per for, our, for the purpose of our applications, it's enough to consider Euclidean balls. So we have the, uh, so the, basically the, our result is a, uh, is a corollary almost modulo times some calculations uh, to uh, the uh, theorem that appeared in a very influential paper uh, by Figel in Schaus in Milman in 1977 in Acta Mathematica. And it says that there is this, that, that uh, the product of those three <coughs> items must be at least of order n squares, so either dimension, you, you cannot have few faces, few vertices, and something be close to a ball. Right, so, okay, so now just to illustrate this, uh, 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 okay, so here, how, how is this proved? So, so maybe this is in a way the most important, even though this has been known for, for uh, like almost 40 years. <laughs> Maybe not stated in this form, but, but uh, by, there is no new argument. This is based on this tangible version of Dvoretsky theorem, which tells us that whenever you have a convex body, you know the in radius of that body, and you also know the average of the norm. So this is norm associated with k, for which k is the unit ball if k is symmetric, but otherwise it's just the Minkowski functional of that, of that set. So average of this uh, gauge or norm on, over the sphere, then most of you, oh, most of sections of dimension which is given by this formula uh, are almost Euclidean in, in the appropriate sense, uh, and when so some of the closeness, closeness to, to Euclidean is uh, hidden in this constant here. Uh, and then the facial dimension is at least uh, uh, C of K. Now, why is it so? Because facial dimension is inherited to, 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 the, sub, to the sections, right? Because if you can approximate, uh, if you can approximate uh, uh, the larger body by a polytop, then just taking a section of that polytope, we get approximation of a, of a section, right? And since we know that, that those sections are almost balls, and we know that balls, we have a lower bound exact, exact formula for the facial and vertical dimension of, of balls, then this is, this is how this follows. And now to get, the, the, to get the inequality here, what one has to do is just one has to apply this fact <coughs> to k and again to the polar of k, and then use the inequality uh, that the product of the average is, is, a, is a greater equal than one, which is a consequence of just cautious schwartz inequality. Okay, so that's the, uh, how much time do I have? Okay, okay so now the illustration is this, that uh, uh, just for very simple examples, uh, how does this uh, inequality work? <coughs> so whenever we take a ball, then the dimension is n. <coughs> the, the actual dimension is n. Both the vertical and uh, facial dimension are theta, are theta of n, exactly over the n. And sphericity is, of course, 1. So we get exactly, essentially, equality here. The, you get the correct order. If you look at the cube, then uh, as sphericity is square root of n, which is the worst case scenario for symmetric sets, centrally symmetric sets, uh, then uh, it's, uh, uh, well, both of those things are fairly easy to, it's sort of obvious that the facial dimension is uh, of order log of n because we have uh, two n faces. This is maybe slightly less obvious, but, but uh, at least for the for the lower estimate, but uh, but it's not hard. For the simplex, 
uh, the situation is um, uh, is um, uh, some, somewhat interesting because a sphericity is as large as it can be for general bodies, <coughs> and uh, and both uh, facial and vertical dimension are log of n. So what we get here is that up to log square. Uh, so here we, we get n square from here, n square from here, and those are so this is precise up up to log square n. So uh, then uh, uh, okay, so so this is pretty tight for like bodies that are balanced, actually. Now examples related to entanglement detection. So first, the asphericity, it's sort of very elementary to calculate for the set of all states. And uh, then there is the, the observation or result uh, due to Gervitz and uh, Barnum, which says that the in radius of the of SEP in uh, bipartite case is the same as in, in radius of the set of all states. So this is not trivial, but uh, but uh, well well known and not that complicated. Then to calculate the vertical dimension, uh, well both of those sets are defined as uh, convex hulls of uh, rank of pure states. In in the first case all pure states, in the second case uh, separable pure states. So it's sort of clear that by choosing uh, sufficiently fine nets in each of those subsets, we're going to get uh, polytopes which are, which are going to approximate uh, those sets. However, there are some surprises. And this is actually what originally got our curiosity because we were, uh, were looking at those things. So, so first, it is very well known that in Euclidean ball, uh, the correct uh, estimate for an epsilon net, which means the, the, the set for which cardinality of a set f so that everything is within epsilon from that one of the elements of that set, covering number, you may say. So you get dimension times logarithm of epsilon, 1 over epsilon in, in the exponent. Uh, then, so then, one, one, then there is a, uh, we want to do the same thing in the set of pure states, which is the which is obtained by taking convex hull of elements from the ball on CD and making them into projections. And the surprise was that this has to, you cannot just take any net on the sphere, take the projections corresponding to those vectors, and uh, take the convex hull. You have to well choose it. Right? This was a surprise for us. Somehow. But it's, it's so, so this takes certain, it's, it's very counterintuitive if you think about this for a moment. Then for the set of uh, separable states, uh, you have to improve the uh, precision of your net by uh, the dimen factor of the dimension, and you get essentially the same, the same result. Once you have a net in each of the factors, then by taking all products, you get a net in the, uh, in the set of separable, st so, so that the convex hull of that, of, that, uh, of that set will give you a polytop approximating SEP. Now again, this was a little bit of a surprise because first we, got, we, we noticed that this is what the standard proofs go goes, and only then we figured out that actually you cannot do better. Okay, so to complete the table, uh, the first uh, uh, row, this follows just from the, case, from the fact that the set of states is self-dual, modulo of reflection and uh, homotity. Uh, then uh, the, but the most importantly, this uh, entry follows from the figel milner so milman inequality, and the fact is that, that you just have to put together this, this, that, and that, so this is uh, fourth power, this is the second power. When you divide them out, uh, you get uh, uh, d squared, then you square it, you get d to the power four. So the product of those two has to be at least d to the power four, and that's how we get the cube. Okay, so now how do we get the, the, the theorem from there? So first of all, suppose that we have, uh, we have uh, a set of positive maps with universal set of witnesses for all 
uh, robustly entangled states. So what it means exactly is that uh, when you take the, uh, well, so this is exactly what it means, that when you apply uh, something that 